Today I'm going to show you a entry level PVE Anaconda build that requires no engineering and that has no modules that requires unlocking. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth as Joanna Today I'm going to do something for the newer players, or well, the players who've pl played for a bit and who maybe just got their hands on an anaconda and want to try and fit it out for combat, and especially for PvE. But you haven't maybe been paying too much attention for um, for engineering, or you just want something quick and maybe you don't do combat that much, don't want to invest the time and effort that is to actually engineership. So that's what we're going to look at today. This is meant for the the mid-game players, the players who, who have a little bit of money. The, the build we're going to look at today is, of course, built around the Anaconda and has a total price of just under 500 million. So you'll need those um, money collected before you start. And if you're having issues um, gathering those money, I will often have money-making videos out that will come out um, whenever there's something new. So stay tuned to the channel and go and have a look at, uh, at what I have posted lately and you might find something useful there. But without further ado, let's just go right ahead and let's have a look at the loadout that I've chosen here. So the focus around the whole build here is it should be fairly easy to use and it should be a well-rounded build that's good for PvE and especially this is designed for rest sites. So maybe not as much conflict zones. You can take this into a conflict zone, but I would recommend doing this in a wing with some of your friends. Um, but definitely rest site and, and I've been playing with this in, in Hazardous Rest Site and it is a very capable ship. So, Weapon-wise, um, our main kinetic damage is going to come from a multi-cannon, or several multi-cannons. So our huge hard point is going to be a 4A gimbaled multi-cannon. Um, same thing with one of the large ones. It does matter, look at those, two of the large ones are on top of the ship. Put the multi-cannon underneath, same place, also underneath, you can see here, with the huge one. So what we're going to do is we're going to split the ship down the middle. We're going to put all the multi-cannons underneath. And we're going to put all our lasers, that we're going to go come back to in a bit, on the, on the top. The reason why we do this is when we are shooting at something, um, if we're shooting with our multi-cannons, if this is our target, we'll tilt the ship up slightly. Um, and we have full coverage with all of multi-cannons, because especially the small ones, um, is located all the way to the back. If we want to shoot up with, the, for instance, we want to hit their shields, we'll tilt the ship downwards a bit so we have the lasers um, pointing towards our target. And if we want to try and have a mix of both, we can, if we're further away, point straight towards them and have all weapons firing at them. But it's a little bit more difficult. But that's why the weapon placement of the of the large multi cannon is important. Then on top we have two um, again gimbaled pulse lasers. This is again our main source of um, of thermal damage, which is good against shields. The two medium ones, again, they are here, so they can pretty much work both on top and below. I mean, the there's a small, you can see a small wing here that should looks like it prevents it from firing down, but that thing is not a part of the actual rendered model, it's just a ship kit that's on. So these can fire downwards. Um, but I've gone with these because otherwise, uh, I've gone with pulse cannons here because otherwise, or pulse lasers, because otherwise we would be um, a little low on thermal damage, I think. And again, for the two small ones, these are located all the way to the rear of the ship. It's a little bit difficult to see here, but as you can clearly see, they're underneath the ship. And they're all the way to the rear. So again, underneath the ship, so we're going to fit those for multi-cannons. And this actually gives us a pretty nice balance between thermal and kinetic damage. So we have a good spread of, uh, of damage all around. Let's move on to the utility mounts. I fitted a kill wound scanner. You can change this out if you want. Um, you can see this when you what is a point two megawatts of power i believe um so you could if you wanted to you can see here you can usually change out for a um, for point defense if you wish um or other modules um but point defense or kill one scanner is probably the most useful one kill one scanner used to give you a little bit more bounty point defense protects against missiles so that depends if you want more um more defense or um, or a little bit extra credit then we have two heat sink launchers. These are just going to be used to try and maintain our heat when we fire off our shield cell banks, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, so we have those two on there. The rest is zero B shield boosters. And the reason why we've gone with B is because, as you can see here uh, down at the bottom, we are a little uh, tight on power. So that's why I've gone with B rated, because we don't really have the power to fit A. We might be able to upgrade one if we're lucky to A, and you could do that. But I like to keep a little bit extra uh, power just in case. 
Um, but this B-rated is what I've been testing with and it works just fine. Moving on to the core internals. Um, for armor, I haven't done anything here because the main tank is going to be on the shields and armor is only going to be for emergencies. Um, mainly to try and save money because some of these armor, as you can see, are extremely expensive. So I want to try and keep the price down uh, and it also keeps the ship lighter. So that's why I've just decided to keep the lightweight alloy to, uh, to save a little bit money and wait. Um, thrusters, again, they are very expensive. The 7A thrusters here are very, very expensive. Um, can't even, can't even uh, remember how much they are, um, but I think they're at least the same price as the hull of the ship. So if you are uh, tight on credit, is it, is it only 67? That can't, or 47? That can't, right. Anyway, the thrusters are fairly expensive, so if you are tight on money, you can downgrade them, but I recommend as soon as you have the money that you upgrade the thrusters again to uh, to A rate, because we it is a big ship, we are heavy, and we're going to be lacking that maneuverability that we would get from having the bigger thrusters. 6A frame shift drive, this is also a place where you can um, save a little bit by going down to B. Um, it is going to give you a little bit extra power, so if you want to get some more power for maybe upgrading your shield boosters, you can do that by downgrading the frame shift drive. I really wouldn't recommend it because it really, really hurts your jump range. Gonna make it difficult to move the ship around, but if you're just gonna keep the ship in one system and never really jump with it, you can easily just downgrade the frame shift drive and that'll be just fine. Life support, A-rated. Life support is a fairly cheap module. They don't really cost a lot. Um, so that's why I've gone with A-rated. And again, you can go D-rate if you want a little bit more mobility, but they're not that heavy to start with, so it isn't really gonna do much anyway. And here we have the 8.8 power distributor. Um, gonna give us plenty of power to power all those weapons. Um, again, this is really a module that I, uh, I would discourage you from downgrading. Uh, you can go B-rated, um, but then again, I would really recommend you upgrade this as quickly as you can if you decide to go with a lower grade. And finally, the sensors, again, this is also a module where you can downgrade if you're shy on, uh, on money. Um, and this is maybe one of the better places to, to downgrade because it's not gonna hurt your uh, effectiveness, effectiveness. So this is a place where you can also downgrade um, and, and you can wait with this upgrade for, for a while. I would definitely recommend you go for the power distributor um, and the frame shift drive before you upgrade the, upgrade the sensors. Finally, we have a look at the optional internals. Here I have a 7A shield generator. I would strongly recommend you get this. I would not uh, downgrade this. If you're going to downgrade your shield generator to a lower grade, um, I wouldn't recommend you go into a hazardous resource extraction site. Maybe stick to low or, or, or somewhere low, low to high, um, or just the normal ones. I wouldn't go into hazardous without the 7A. And we have two. 6B, note the B here, because the B-rated shield cell banks has uh, an extra charge should it's going to allow you to stay longer and if you carry more effective hit points with you um, when doing these. And of course, when you're firing your shield cell banks, that's why we have the heat sinks from before. You can often fire two, um, two shield cell banks while you're firing one heat sinks, which is why I normally fly with two of them, so I can fire one one, I fire, sorry, try that again. I fire one, fire the heat sink, wait for the heat to begin to drop. As soon as the heat drops, I fire off the second one. And firing off these two will almost completely fill up your shields. So when you're low on shields, this is your emergency to get some hit points back. I've put a fighter hanger on here. And the reason why I've done that is because we're not doing any engineering to this ship, we are going to be a little bit slow, a little bit heavy, not, not going to maneuver that well as you maybe would in other ships. Um, and therefore, sometimes if you're fighting small, very agile ships, it can be difficult to track them if they might just run rings around you. This is why we carry the fighter hangar, so you have the opportunity to go out. Um, the fighters you choose is really up to you. If you're new to combat or a newer player, I recommend at least having one fighter that has a gimbal weapon. As you can see here, this one has gimbal pulse lasers and chaff. I think that's a good combination. Um, and also here I have chosen one that has a fixed plasma, um, accelerator, a fixed plasma um, weapon and chaff as well. Um, but again, choose whatever you like. Um, additional, this will allow you to bring friends on board so you can do multi-crew if uh, you feel like it. Okay, moving further down, we have two 5D hull reinforcements and one 5D hull uh, module reinforcements here. 
And down in the military compartment all the way at the bottom, we have another 5D module reinforcements. This is just in case of emergency. If our shields go down, this is going to protect our module. You could switch out one of the module reinforcements for another hull reinforcement. That's really just a balancing act and, and how you prefer to play. Um, so that's a little bit up to you. I have then chosen to go with a collector limpet controller. I've got uh, 3A. You can pretty much fit any on here. I just went with the biggest because that could fit in the slot. There's no four, class four of these. Um, because I had the power to do it. Um, and I actually forgot to fit this while I was, was testing it, but it it doesn't really I mean we have the power to uh, um, to run it. As we can see here, we have a maximum of... Uh, of 36 and we're using 35.89 megawatts so the collector limit is, is good because when you're out there and you're shooting ships they will drop a lot of engineering material so if you're going to engineer the ship in the future it's a good idea to fit a collector limpet controller and carry some limpets with you so you can send them out and collect up all those nice engineering materials just to make your life a little bit easier down the road then when you eventually decide to go and engineer so to carry those limpets, I fitted two cargo racks, um, two class four cargo racks that gives you uh, 32 tons of cargo, 32 limpets. That should be sufficient um, for at least a while, and otherwise you can synthesize uh, more limpets further on. And finally, in a class two slot, I fitted a advanced discovery scanner, um, just because you know when we're flying around, I always fit it because it. I really hate getting into a system and I don't have the system data, and I have to run to the nav beacon to scan it or something like that. Therefore. Um, I have decided to go with a uh, the advanced discovery scanner. And finally here we have a few clips of uh, the ship in action. And um, as you can see, it is a very capable ship and it can definitely holds its own in a uh, hazardous resource extraction site. Um, I did even come up against a um, an elite anaconda, which is pretty much the worst you could come up against. There may be some combination of wings that might be a little bit worse, but an elite anaconda is probably one of the, the most difficult targets you could come across in a, uh, in a hazardous resource extraction site. Um, and when you're coming across these bigger targets, it can, the ship can begin to lag a little. So unless you have very good piloting skills, what I recommend you do is you either stick um, to some of the local police ships that would be in the, in the area, so that they will help you out take the target down. Alternatively, you can use the tactic that I used here, where I will start by ramming the target. That will not uh, cause them to aggro you. You will not pull aggro from ramming. So I ramped the shields down and I ramped his hull down and then it was nice and low in hull. I decided to finally engage him um, and by doing that I was able to take him down uh, without having too much risk. So that's a little uh, that's a little trick you can use there to, to take down more difficult ships and, and pretty much break their shields before they even realize that you're an enemy even though you've been ramming them three times in a row. So. I really hope that you liked the video. Um, there will of course be a link for the build in the description uh, below the video. And uh, if you liked it, if you're going to try it out, uh, let me know. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.